Hey guys, Pete here. Westworld Season 1 Episode 5 has dropped and we have a lot to talk about. This will be my Episode 5 recap and review and will contain spoilers for everything that's happened in Westworld up to this point. I'm tweaking my Westworld Episode Videos format again, so this will be a brief scene by scene with some thoughts about the storylines at the end. With all that out of the way, let's jump right into this episode. Episode 5 starts out with Dr. Ford in the cold storage area talking to the old host we saw in an earlier episode. He tells him a story from childhood about the saddest thing he ever saw. It's a story about him and his brother getting a dog, an old greyhound. They took the dog to the park and let it off the leash. And then it sees a cat. Mistaking it for the felt rabbit he had chased during his races, he ran after the cat and caught it. He killed the cat and then sat there looking confused. Ford says the dog had spent his whole life trying to catch that thing. Now it had no idea what to do. It's a telling story in that it had such an effect on him as a child. It isn't that Ford was terrified terrorized about the killing of the cat, but that it was sad for him to see that once the dog caught the th that thing, it was then lost. We catch up with Dolores who's hearing voices. She hears things like, find me, and then says, show me how. At that moment, we realize she isn't alone. Instead, she's with William, Logan, and Slim, who have just arrived outside of Pariah. Logan describes the place as a city of outcasts, delinquents, thieves, whores, and murderers. Slim assures them that they will be rewarded by Lazo, and William asks Dolores if she's all right after the others start off. He says he heard her talking to someone, and she says it must have been the wind. As they walk into the town, we can see that it's massive, and there's a lot going on. It looks more chaotic and bustling compared to Sweetwater, and there's a definite feeling of lawlessness. Logan explains to William that the further out you go, the more grandiose the narratives become. He says that that doesn't come cheap, though, and rumors are that Westworld is hemorrhaging cash. The company is thinking of buying them out. He also mentions that it started out as a partnership, but one of the partners killed themselves just before the park opened. We learn that there's a group of men called Confederados in the park who call themselves the Army of the New Virginia, and that Logan is basically out to get involved with their narrative about going to war. Supposedly, this happens out at the end of the park, but Logan has never made it that far. Dolores mentions that her father told her about the Confederados, soldiers that refused to surrender after the war, who now work as mercenaries beyond the border. The man in black is still traveling with Lawrence, and we see that he has Teddy slumped over a horse riding along with him. Lawrence says that Teddy was Wyatt's friend, and the man in black confirms that that's why why they brought him along. He expects Teddy will lead him right to Wyatt. As they talk about his dire situation, the small boy we saw Ford talking with in, season, in episode 2 shows up. The man in black sends him to get water right after Lawrence says that Teddy won't make it after losing so much blood. We learn that the plan is to drain Lawrence's blood and give it to Teddy as he slits his throat and hangs him up to let it drain. We see Maeve is being repaired and learn that one of the techs is a real douchebag. The other tech whose name we learn is Felix later in the show is still freaked out from the time when she got up from the table and took off. As they're working, he notices that she had a knife wound and that it looked like they were digging around for something. Of course, this was from the last scene of the last episode when Maeve found the bullet they had left behind. They take their lunch break and we see that there's something in the cabinet where the second tech leaves his computer. Teddy looks a little better after he gets some of Lawrence's blood, but they're, he's still in bad shape. At first, he asks the man in black to kill him out of mercy, and then the man in black tricks him into coming along by lying that Wyatt had taken Dolores. He knows this will work to get Teddy involved, and sure enough, Teddy stands and walks to the horses. The man in black tells the boy not to worry about Lawrence, that someone will be along for him shortly. Dolores is still having visions of the scene around the white church. William asks if she's alright, and they start to talk about changing your life. He mentions maybe that's why people come here, because they can change the story, be whatever they want, and that people in the real world don't even know about it. She asks what he means by the real world, and he deflects by by saying that he thought they weren't supposed to notice things like that. She tells him recently she feels like the whole world is calling to her in a way it never has before. He touches her hand and then a parade starts to come down the street. Logan comes back and Slim tells them that Alazo has agreed to give them an audience the very next day. He says there is a brothel they should check out in the meantime and the two of them have words about Dolores. William says not to refer to her as a doll because he thinks there's something going on with her and she sort of understands. Logan says of course you would think that. Again, we get reminded of how over-the-top Pariah is as Dolores moves into the parade as she's looking for something. As she's walking, we hear Dr. Ford's voice say something to the effect of, 
rest and dream slow, and she passes, passes out right there. When she wakes up, she's in the programming center with Ford across from her. They go through the normal routine where, do you know where you are? And she says, I'm in a dream. And this time he adds, yes, Dolores, you're in my dream. They talk about dreams, and he asks her if she's been thinking of getting out of her modest loop, taking on a bigger role. He talks about his father telling him to learn to accept his lot in life because the world didn't know him anything, and how he just decided to build his own world. He asks if she remembered the man he used to be. When she says she doesn't, he says, but you must remember him, the man who created you. He's referring to Arnold and when she continues to say she doesn't remember, he tells her that under all those updates that he is still inside her. Her mind is a walled garden that not even death can stop the flowers from growing there. He asks her if she's been hearing voices, has Arnold been talking to her, and when she doesn't say anything he puts her in analysis mode. He asks when her last contact with Arnold was and she responds 34 years, 42 days, 7 hours ago. This was the day Arnold died and when he asks, she says the last thing he told her was that she was going to help him destroy this place. In the end, he says he's sorry for bothering her but that she's the only one still left that was around back then. No one else knows like they know. He switches her off and leaves the room but we hear her say he doesn't know. I didn't tell him anything. We see that the tech had a bird hidden in the cabinet that he's working on. He gets it to come back online right as the other tech comes into the room, but it's more flailing around than flying. He has the other guy grab it, it bites him, and they start arguing. The douchey guy tells him that he isn't an ornithologist or a coder, so he better just destroy the bird before he gets in trouble for misappropriating corporate property. Then he tells them that they have another body, and we see it's Maeve again. When he says it's her again, the second tech said that he should have been weeded out in the person testing process before they ever hired him for the job. William is still concerned with Dolores and when he asks how she's doing she says she's been having troubled dreams. She says she feels more like herself now and Logan interrupts to say Alazo waits. When they approach the man sitting at his table we realize that Alazo is actually Lawrence. Logan tells him that in recompense for saving Slim they want to be introduced to the con his confederado friends. He tells him no and when Logan tries to push the issue Lawrence's man punches Logan in the face. This sends Dolores into a vision and then she tells Alazo that she knows he's looking for something. If he lets them, she knows they can help. After this, he offers them a job stealing a nitroglycerin shipment from a Union convoy. Logan excitedly accepts, but William points out that the Confederados want the explosive to use against Lawrence's people in their raids. He assures him that personal grudges have no place where profit is concerned. Dolores gets a new outfit and we can see that she's now packing heat. She has concerns about harming the soldiers in the robbery and William assures her that no one will get hurt. As they're getting the nitro with no problems, Logan decides to try and teach the driver a lesson. He pulls him down, starts beating him up, but in the process, the soldier is able to tackle him. This gets Slim killed, and eventually William has to start killing the soldiers to save Dolores, after one of them picks up the gun that Slim dropped. Of course, Logan thinks this is all great, but Dolores is upset that they lied to the men and ended up killing them. They load up Slim's body and head back to Pariah. Alazo takes the shipment and sells it to the Confederados. They're eager to go and start blowing things up, but he convinces them to stay for one more night of partying at the brothel. They agree, and the leader walks off with his arm around Logan, telling him who will be a great asset to their ranks. Ellie's working on a host when she sees the stray being pushed by on a cart. She asks where they're taking it, and the two techs say they are taking it to livestock and then to the incinerator. She decides to follow, and we see that her being there freaks out the other techs that had the bird. We see her go into the room next door and shake down the tech in there for having sex with the host in the center when she was in for repair. Ellie uses this to get access to the stray to check him out. After looking him over, she discovers there's something hidden under his skin. She starts to remove it and we don't find out exactly what it is until later when she's talking to Bernard. She takes it to him and says that someone has been using this satellite uplink to smuggle data out of the park. At the brothel, we see that it is absolutely over the top and they, that the only one who's really enjoying it is Logan. The Confederado leader says they should join him in the war and William once again objects. This time, Logan pushes him to the point of William actually getting up and sort of grabbing up, pushing against the wall. He was belittling him about work-related things and he said he picked him because he was no threat to anyone. While they're arguing, Dolores wanders off and ends up in a room with a fortune teller. 
She fans out her cards, and when Dolores picks one, it has the maze printed on it. When she asks what it means, the fortune teller turns into her, and she tells herself she must follow the maze. She asks what's wrong with her, and the other says, maybe you're unraveling. At this point, she sees a little something poking out of her wrist, and it starts tearing at her skin when she pulls on it. It's only a vision, but when she looks back at her wrist to see it's okay, she ends up running out of the room because the other version of herself disappears and you know she's generally freaked out she ends up going down a flight of stairs where she sees that lawrence is planning on betraying the confederados he's pumping all the nitroglycerin into slim's body and refilling the empty bottles with tequila she knows this is going to be a big problem so she runs upstairs to warn william that they should get out of there fast william says he knows that they're being forced to take action by the park but he's not going to play along with it she stresses to him that it isn't a game and that she she knows that together they can find a way out. She says there's a voice inside her telling her what to do and that it's telling her that she needs him. Then she kisses him. Outside, some of the confederados are throwing the bottles of what they think are nitro back and forth. One eventually falls on the ground and breaks, and when it doesn't explode, the leader knows he's been betrayed. His men start beating up Logan as William decides to leave with Dolores. She says they have Logan, but William decides to leave him there. The confederado leader cuts them off, and Dolores ends up killing everyone near by. When William asks how she was able to do it, she says that people come here to change their lives, the story of their lives. She just imagined a story where she didn't have to be the damsel. They hear a train whistle in the background and take off to try to catch it. They make it just in time, and when they go inside, they find Alazo with Slim's body in the final car. They settle in for what he says will be a long ride to the front, and the scene ends with Del when Dolores notices that the maze is printed on the top of Slim's casket. Teddy and the man in black enter a saloon we haven't seen before and they order whiskey. When it comes, it's delivered by Dr. Ford himself. The two of them have a back and forth about what the man in black is looking for and Ford says that he doesn't have the imagination to conceive of someone like him. The man in black asks if Wyatt was made as a worthy adversary for him, someone to stop him from making it to the center of the maze. Ford asks what he's hoping to find there. He tells Teddy a story about why people come there and then says he's thinking there is something deeper something the man who created it wanted to express something true Ford says he can just ask if he's looking for the moral of the story but the man in black says he would need a shovel since the man he needs to talk to died 35 years ago he then says maybe he left something behind and then pulls out his knife while saying I wonder what I'd find if I opened you up Teddy grabs a knife by the blade to protect Ford and the man in black asks if Ford came to talk to him into stopping this quest. Ford says by no means he has no interest in stopping someone on a journey of self-discovery, then gets up and leaves. When he, when he does, the room comes back to life Teddy slams his drink and then gets up saying they need to get back on the road that they're losing time. In the final scene, we see that Maeve is back underground and that the tech is working on the bird again. As he works on the code, we see the bird spring to life and start flying around the room. As he's watching it ecstatically, the bird flies over and lands on Maeve's hand and we see that she is sitting up and conscious. She says, hello Felix, it's time you and I had a ch chat and the episode ends. So a ton of surprising things happen in this episode. By the end, I was wondering how this group of characters will continue past this season. It just has a feeling that either Ford or the Man in Black or both are going to reach a conclusion in their storylines in the next five episodes. I don't know though, I guess anything could happen. At the end of every Dexter season, it was hard to figure out how they'd have another one. But these are big characters who would be hard to contract for a five season run. And their stories are heading towards something fast. We got nearly no Bernard and no Teresa at all on this episode. The satellite uplink device is an interesting twist, but not much to go on as to who might have put it there. Dolores' only interaction was with Ford, who pulled her out intentionally. We see that she's still struggling with the changes she's going through, but she's making the right decision decisions that are leading her towards the maze. Obviously, this will be exactly what the man in black needs to get there himself. The foreshadowing of Dr. Ford's Greyhound story is something to tuck away in the back of our minds. It's about getting that thing you've always wanted, but being left with no sense of pu purpose afterwards. We could speculate about this in the comments, but this scene and story seem important. 
We discovered what Logan's financial motivations were. This isn't terribly surprising, but the tension that's building between him and William will certainly lead to something. I found the pariah narrative to be really crazy, but was left wondering why or how it's been changed so that the maze keeps being shown to Dolores. We know the man in black has made it through this narrative in the past with his long association with Lawrence, so was he introduced to the maze but just couldn't find it before? I'm a little confused on this and not sure how it would relate to the Wyatt story or the scenes with the white church that Dolores keeps envisioning. I'm excited to see how they all tie together though. The Man in Black continues to get more interesting as and as we learn more about how the hosts and narratives work, his mastery becomes more clear. It seems like every decision he makes is a function of playing a game with the desired outcome based on his experience. So you could say, you know, he's leveled up compared to all the other guests. I feel like with each episode, a lot of the early theories, like the alternate timeline theory, get more holes in them and don't really hold up. And the characters seem to turn out to be what they are presented as. At the same time, the writers definitely toss things at us to make us doubt the reality, though. I mean, in this episode, the man in black threatens to cut open Ford, which is a clear implication that he might just be a host that Arnold created. But I think Ford is most likely human, and this is just a red herring to make us think. In the first episode, we saw the, that Dolores was capable of deception. In this episode, we see that she can even deceive Dr. Ford. This makes for some very interesting possibilities abilities in the future. Hopefully we'll get more Bernard and Dolores one-on-ones in the next episode to help sort out the details. That's it for this week's episode. The trailer looks absolutely insane and I guess it should since we're halfway through the season at this point. There were so many good points and scenes in this episode but if I had to pick one I think Maeve having the bird land on her finger was the top moment. Let me know in the comments what your favorite scene was and where you think things are headed. Please like the video if you liked it and subscribe to my channel to find out about all my new videos as soon as they come out. Thanks for watching. I'll talk to you soon.